Hi, in today's video, we'll be covering the Danfoss uh, SM800A system manager and networking and communication options within the controller. With our SM800A, uh, we have traffic or communication in, in two directions with the system manager. Uh, one, we would consider upstream where uh, we would be taking data out of the system manager to use for other purposes. Uh, we'll get into the next slide where we'll talk some more about what some of those reasons would be. But th this is one direction where traffic is being taken out of the system manager with the data being extracted for other purposes. And then we have the second direction with the system manager. We would consider that downstream. Uh, so this would be other devices that are being used in the network and in the control system for other control purposes. And they're reporting back into the system manager. Uh, so that, that would be your downstream traffic or, or devices would be those, those types of controllers. E each type upstream and downstream requires a physical connection. We'll get into some more about what those connections look like, uh, but these are the, the two um, sides of uh, traffic and networking that we'll uh, talk about here with the system managers, upstream and downstream traffic. If we focus on the upstream side, uh, so this would be uh, an Ethernet connection out of the system manager back to a switch, a router, or a network of some uh, form to allow for that data to be extracted. Uh, the format of that data coming out of our controller is XML, so someone would have to use a series of XML commands to extract the data that they want from the system manager to use for other purposes. Uh, the, the reasoning that that data is being extracted, you can see some of that in the second uh, set of bullet points here. Uh, dashboards, so pulling in data to be able to display uh, history you know, trending on case temperatures, rack pressures, these types of things so that a user can understand performance of their system. Alarming, if an alarm were to occur on a system uh, to get notification out to the proper parties, whether that's <clears throat> a technician or a contractor so that they could potentially look into servicing the rack or system as need be. And then for, for people that are looking to extract the data to a higher level device, so they may want to bring data out of our system manager into another interface that they've built for the site, uh, that would also be an option as well uh, through these uh, XML commands. If the formatting of the data needs to be in a different format, something like Modbus or BACnet, uh, that can be accomplished. It would just require a gateway like we have pictured in the middle here. So that gateway would take those uh, that XML data out of the system manager here and convert that into that other format needed to allow for that HMI or secondary interface to properly display the data. This is a depiction of our connection. So at the bottom half of the system manager, if you remove the cover plate, these are the plugs you would see behind that, that cover. Uh, Ethernet zero here at the top highlighted. This is our uh, connection point that we would make for remote access and for that data extraction that we just covered on the upstream side of things. Uh, so this would just be a standard Ethernet cable. That connection is recessed. It can be a little hard to recognize or identify initially for the first time someone's looked at the units, but that's our connection point for remote access uh, for the system manager. Uh, three plugs highlighted to the right here would be plugs for downstream devices that we'll be getting into more detail on. So as you can see here, two plugs for Modbus communication, and then a third plug for Echelon 485 communication. Uh, each plug has three screw terminals on it, two of the screw terminals for the communication wiring itself, and a third for the shield. Uh, so we'll get more into that as well. And then you can also see at the bottom of the unit down here, what we have labeled as Ethernet 1. This is a second Ethernet port. We do not want to plug the cable in here that we would be uh, tying back into a switch or router for remote access. This is an Ethernet port that's dedicated to connections for downstream devices. So other controllers on the network that may be communicating back to our system manager over an IP form of uh, communication. 
On the back of the cover plates, you'll see uh, some uh, sticker here that gives you a layout of, of the relays, the purpose of each, and, and numbering on the terminals as well. So this can be very helpful for someone. If we focus on the right side again, you'll see, just as we had pictured on our previous slide, uh, two Modbus plugs, and then a third plug for echelon communication. Uh, there is a terminal switch for termination above each of these plugs. We'll talk about that some more as well. And then one change here is for our uh, retrofit version of the 880A. So we have a, a specific part number for uh, TP78 communication out of the system manager. Uh, you'll see that we actually have five, or I'm sorry, four echelon plugs here instead of uh, just one. Rationale behind this is these units being used for retrofit applications. Older series of controllers typically had multiple echelon plugs to work with. So this would make for a smoother transition of moving your wiring over from the older system managers to the newer. What types of communication uh, control or, or what types of controllers are, are we seeing downstream communicating back to the system manager and, and in what format? Uh, so this is a slide that gives you some of that data. So you can see four categories again, our two echelon communication types, depending on which controller we have. And then we'll also have Modbus and uh, potentially an IP uh, device wired back into the system manager. Uh, for our Echelon 485, we have a communication module that's potentially talking to input and output modules for centralized control. Those communication modules, specifically the 101C, is a 485 style of communication. Uh, we also have PAC controllers like our PC782A, and then case controllers 750 and then 55 and 550A. Uh, the, the latter two you can see marked with a, an asterisk here. They can talk Echelon, but it requires an optional COM card to be able to do that. By default, they offer Modbus communication, so you'll see these two devices also listed under our Modbus uh, section. But they can talk Echelon if that card has been added because we want to put them on that side of the network for some reason. Echelon TP78, so again, another format of the COM module. Here it's the CM101A, so we always want to pay attention to what COM module we're using and make sure it matches the system manager Echelon type that we have. Uh, so that's our breakdown between a 101C and 101A. Uh, we had a, another version of 750, so you see that listed under both categories here. We had two separate part numbers, one for a 485 communication style and one for TP78. Modbus is probably our most popular uh, communication style today. So some of our uh, case controllers, uh, our current version, the CC55 is native Modbus. Some of our previous versions here, the 550A, 525A that you may come across on a job, uh, they are also Modbus. Uh, certain pack controller options, I've highlighted the PC572 here, that would speak over Modbus back to the system manager our DGS lead detectors, EKE1C, which is our superheater valve driver for stepper valves. And then you get into some more unique uh, controllers that you may see on a, a, a job that's going to talk you know, Modbus back to our system manager, something like our PLC-based devices, MCX and Allsmart. And then when you get into some third-party devices, uh, Square D power link panels, and then other third-party devices that we may not even be communicating with today that we will in the future, but you would typically see them over Modbus as well. For these Modbus devices, there's something called a baud rate. That's uh, part of how they, how quickly or how they communicate back to the system manager. Uh, for these devices that we're talking to over Modbus, they have to be on or have the same baud rate within them to be on the same network from a wiring standpoint. So that's part of the reason you see a second Modbus port offered is because we may have different Modbus devices that use different baud rates and we have to separate them for that reason. Lastly, our uh, Ethernet based devices uh, really just one today that we use uh, probably we'll see more devices transition over to this side of things moving forward uh, but today our pc 782b so this is a variation of our 782a from our left column same functionality and control it just offers uh, ip or ethernet communication as opposed to echelon 485. 
the wiring layout for the 800A. So when we focus on our Modbus Echelon plugs, these are point-to-point -point daisy chains. So we typically will have multiple devices uh, linked together on a communication loop back to one plug. Uh, so you can see here each plug, each controller, downstream device back to the system manager. We just want to keep the integrity of that communication loop. With Echelon, it, it may not be as uh, significant if A and B are crossed, but for good practices, we like to keep them consistent throughout from one device to the next on the communication loop. So that, that's what you'll see, though, for our wiring layout is just a point-to-point -point daisy chain from one device to the next. We don't want to do any stars or any other types of wiring configuration, um, just point-to-point -point back to the controller. You can use the controller in two different fashions with the communication loop. So if we're looking at Echelon 485 as an example, uh, you can see some of the, the limitations we have here on distance. But this would be an example of a point-to-point -point daisy chain uh, where we end up at our system manager. So this is a more traditional wiring layout. Uh, so I, uh, here we need termination to signify the, each end of the loop. So within the system manager of, above the Echelon plug, there is a switch here. So if the system manager is one end of that comm loop, uh, we would want to turn that termination switch to the on position. And then at the last device on the other end of the comm loop, either it would be a, a device that also has a similar switch that we would want to turn on, or we would have to install a, a physical resistor, uh, 120 ohms, to be used to signify the other end of the loop. So that, that end of line uh, termination becomes very important in a comm loop. If we don't have that, that can end up in nuisance alarms for devices being offline or improper data being reported back into the system manager. Um, so always important that we focus on that termination being correct. We can also configure a layout and kind of have two loops out of a plug. Uh, so again, looking at the Echelon plug, you could do this in a configuration where the system manager is in the middle of the loop. Uh, so here, because the system manager is not one end, that termination switch that we have inside of the unit would be in the off position. And then the system manager would go in uh, two directions out of it with the communication wiring. And each end of that would need to have termination for, uh, for the devices on either end with the 120 ohm resistor. Modbus wiring is, is pretty much the same here. So again, polarity has to be observed A and B from one device to the next. Uh, termination, if the system manager is at one end and, and then another device downstream at the other end, that termination switch needs to be in the on position for the system manager and then also at the device on the far end. And then similarly here as well with Modbus, we can use the system manager in the middle of the loop uh, with termination off at the system manager and then resistors at either end of the loop. This is one way we can combine two communication loops into one is by placing the system manager in the middle. Cable types are very important here. Uh, so for each type of communication, Echelon 485, Modbus, TP78, there's specific cable types that need to be used uh, for Echelon 485 and Modbus. The, uh, the general adherence that we need to stick to would be an EIA 485 rated cable. You can see some of the examples listed here in the middle of our left side of this slide. Most commonly used on the market today that we see is the Windy City wire. Um, so that one's labeled here under smart wire, but that, that's the one we see used most often today. But ultimately it, it needs to be a EIA 485 rated cable to match all the specifications of the wiring that the controllers expect. If we don't use a cable that matches the spec, then we have a higher risk again of data loss, uh, nuisance communication alarms, and these types of things. TP78 uses a level four cable. So uh, it is not necessarily the same cable type that we would use for the other COM types. Uh, but yeah, for TP78, level four cable is our recommendation and the spec for the devices. And the line resistors, so this is just a picture to give you an idea of, of what that connection looks like. So again, we're typically dealing with plugs that have three screw terminals on them. That resistor goes across the A and the B uh, wires on that connection point. I uh, typically like to see them twisted in with the COM uh, leads, just because if not, then they can potentially 
vibrate or, or have somewhat of a loose connection, and that may cause some of the same issues we're talking about here. IP-based devices, so the PAC controller 782B. Again, this would be an Ethernet cable out of the PAC controller. Uh, that connection goes back to the system manager, but it's not just a direct cable. So here, out of the system or out of the PAC controllers, rather, you can see this going to a router. So that would be the configuration needed for that device type. It is important that it's a router, not a switch. Uh, with the router, it has the ability to assign the IP address to the PAC controller and the system manager, which is required. Uh, so for this layout, that that is an important aspect is that uh, we we aren't just taking the cable from the PAC controller right to the system manager, and that with the router, uh, that it is tr a true router and not a switch. Thanks for the, joining the video today. Hopefully you found this helpful and gives you a little more knowledge on our network options within the system manager.